Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. So you might already know that Clip Studio Paint is releasing a version 2 this time around, and they asked me to review it. Since CSP version 2 is quite a big update and there's been a lot of talks about it, I figured that a lot of you would want to know what new features it brings to the table, whether they suit your needs, and whether it would be worth buying the new version. So, today's video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint, and we are going to have a chill drawing session while trying the new features of CSP version 2 together. Let's get into it right away. So, CSP have shared the list of version 2 new features with me, and the new feature that I feel a lot of you are going to be interested about is the new built-in adjustable 3D hat model. I feel like everyone has, at some point, struggled drawing hats from various angles. It's one thing to struggle with realistic hat proportions where there are already quite a lot of 3D references readily available, but it's a little more tricky for stylized hats like, for example, cartoon style or anime style hats. The new 3D hat model has built-in parameters that you can adjust according to the face style that you want. What you want to do is first go to the operations tab on the left hand side of the toolbar and select the object one. Now click on the hat model and select this little wrench icon. Then on the left part of the box, click on hat model. So the 3D hat has pre-made presets here like cartoon style, anime style, SD, realistic, muscular, and even old looking models. They also have like this slider where you can control how intensely you want to use the presets, so you can mix and match between two or more presets. Like, guys, look at this. You can even make a chibi style old person if you want. If you're not very into the presets, there are also parameters for each part of the face where you can customize them however you like. For example, if you click on the eyes part of this, you can customize the size, slant, height, rotation, and even the depth of the eyes. If you click on other parts of the face here, you can adjust other parts of the face too. And if you play around with the parameters and later on decide that you don't like it, you can simply click on this icon to reset it back to default. Let me adjust these parameters real quick before we start drawing. I'm going to just use the anime style preset and then tweak it a little to match it with my art style. It would also be lovely if in the future there could be parameters to adjust the facial expression. But for now, I think having parameters to adjust the head style from realistic to stylistic is already a move in the right direction. Granted, I personally don't follow 3D base models to the bone, but having a base model that I can adjust to my style is a big help. Next, since we have the head part settled here, I'm going to give it a body by clicking on the materials tab on the left hand side of the toolbar. Look for 3D and click on the drop down arrow and then click on body type. If you're using PC or laptop, click on this little arrow on the right hand side to spawn the materials tab. This will bring out a selection of CSP's built in 3D body models. Let's try choosing the male body type for now. Let me try and play around with the pose for a bit. This isn't really a new update, but CSP has a feature where it can detect and apply poses directly from a photo. You want to go to the left side of the box and select Pose. There will be some icons here. Click on the rightmost one that says Extract Pose. You can pick an image from your device, and it will extract that pose into the 3D model for you. I actually like it a lot. Even though the poses aren't always perfect, it gives a 
a nice starting point that you can pick up from and adjust just a little more instead of making the post from scratch. I like this post already, but I think I want to use a female model instead of a male model. Thankfully, in the version 2 model, there's this function here where you can change the gender of your model even after the post is applied, and it's going to retain the post that you already set up. Next, if you select the 3D model like we did with the head, there are parameters that you can adjust for the body parts. For example, if you click on the torso part, you can move this cross horizontally to make the torso bigger or thinner. If you move the cross vertically, you can make the torso longer or shorter, and etc. For me, I tend to stylize my torso shorter and the legs longer, but it's up to you how you want to stylize your human body, and these parameters are for you to adjust however you like. I find this really helpful since it now allows you to be able to adjust the proportions of the body. If you want to draw other body types such as curvy or slender bodies, even though this is not really a new feature, in case you didn't know, CSP body models are actually adjustable in that sense as well. What you want to do is to find the floating toolbar below the 3D model, then select the rightmost icon. If you move this cross around, you can change the body type just like that. I think that's a really neat feature that's going to help you if you are trying to draw more diverse body types. So this post was a post we extracted from a photo, right? Another new version 2 feature that I'm sure a lot of you are going to like is that you can do this with the hand pose too. Except, instead of from an existing photo, it allows you to capture the hand pose live using a camera and then it automatically applies the captured pose into the hand. That sounds really cool in theory, right? I'm so excited about it, so let me try that for us. Did you see that? Oh my god, that's so cool! When I first thought about this new function, I just expected it to be able to capture the hand gesture from a photo, like after we snap it and stuff, but it's actually doing that in real time. I used to be a student animator, and one of my biggest pet peeves in handling human 3D models was the fact that I had to move each finger one by one, but I can do that in one click in real time now. Oh, I like this feature a lot. I'm still kind of mind blown by this, so let me try this for a bit more. If you ever need a hand reference that you can rotate and change around easily, this is going to be so insanely helpful and time-saving. Let me just try and apply a hand pose for our model right here. This feature is really nice and I'm already very impressed by it, but if I'm allowed to wish for something, it would be great if there's a hand-only model. Personally, I tend to have more problems on the hands than the body itself, so loading an entire body model when I only need the hand might be a little too heavy for my very old PC. But then again, this is already a very helpful feature. I'm done setting the model up, and now I'm going to draw following the base. I don't often use 3D bases, so I'm kinda bad at posing and adjusting a 3D model. I'm going to use the 3D base as a loose guide and change things around as I see fit. Usually I tend to just sketch on canvas without a base since I used to find adjusting the model base is too much work, so unless it's a very complicated pose or angle that I can't get right, I personally don't use 3D bases a lot. But now that adjusting the pose and proportions have gotten so much easier than it used to, I think I will consider using it more. When sketching, I tend to sketch multiple times, starting from silhouettes or scribbles, mannequin sketch, and then the knit sketch. But this allows me to skip the first one or two steps, which is nice. It seems that I didn't adjust the model quite fitting for my personal drawing style, but it's okay. The model has helped me quite a lot already, 
and I can adjust it from here by myself. I actually don't have much idea yet of what kind of outfit and setting I'm going to draw her in, so please bear with me as I try to figure things out. I'm currently thinking of an Arthur Dorian kind of scene, where the character holds an umbrella while reaching out to the viewer's hand. I think I want to adjust the legs and the skirt, but they are in two separate layers. CSP's liquify tool was already a huge hit in my artist circle when it first came out, but did you know that in version 2, the liquify tool will be usable on multiple layers instead of just one single layer like before? So I can liquify both my leg layer and skirt layer without needing to merge it beforehand. This is another simple improvement but I personally find it really handy as I like having my layers separate. Now for the umbrella, I'm going to use the help of a CSP 3D model to draw it. Oh, and since I'm using many layers, I'm going to try to be organized and name my layers based on what's in that layer. Next, I'm going to do a blocking of the character with a flat gray color to see the overall silhouette. Now that I'm pretty much done with the neat sketch and silhouette blocking, I'll be moving back from my iPad to PC, and there's another new feature that I wanted to try out. So there's a new feature called Shading Assist, which apparently can put automatic lighting and shading on your drawing. What you want to do is set your line art layer to reference layer, which you can do by selecting your line art layer all folder, and then clicking on this little lighthouse icon that says set as reference layer. Then you also want to make sure that you are selecting your color layer. Now go to edit and click on shading assist. That's pretty cool, right? It seems that this blue ball is the light source, and it seems that there's already some pre-made presets for the shadow colors that you can choose from if you click the drop down here. For now, I think the free to backlight preset works the best for the setting that I have in mind, so I'm going to start with that and then adjust it more as I move forward with it. You can change the colors of this by clicking on the color box and picking another color. 
You can also change the blending mode by clicking on the drop down, but I'm going to keep it like this for now. I think while the auto function isn't perfect yet, as you can see that this still needs a lot of manual adjustment on both the placement of shadows and just tidying it up in general. If you tend to do messy painting as your main workflow instead of a neat layered cell shadings, this could totally work as a nice starting point for digital painting, as it even lets you to adjust the colors and the portion of each color. I mentioned this a lot in my previous videos, but the primary way I work is by having a sketch, putting base colors and lighting under it, and the rest is painting above all the layers. Also, there are some updates to the color blending. If you notice, in the previous versions of CSP, if you blend blue and yellow together, it's just going to create a somewhat muddy color in the middle. But now, you can make the blending kinda mimic how paints interact in real life. So, if you mix blue and yellow, it will turn green, like how actual paints behave. You can change the blending mode of your brush by going to Stop Tool Details, Click on this little wrench icon here, select ink, and enable color mixing over here. A couple more parameters will be available to modify. And you can change the mixing mode from standard to a perceptual. I'm going to click on this box beside the mixing mode parameter to make it show in my subtool details panel without me needing to click on the little wrench icon. Now let's see if there's actually any difference in the standard versus new perceptual color mixing mode. First, I didn't think there would be much difference to be honest, but I'm very impressed at how it looks. The difference might not be that visible for colors that don't really produce other colors when mixed, but what I do feel is that it's a little easier to mix colors in a way that's dynamic. I don't know if I'm making sense, but Let's take this red and yellow for example. When I usually paint with the old color blending, I will usually need to manually put an orange color in the middle of the red and yellow to be able to come up with this. So I think it's not that it automatically makes your colors look good. You can still produce dynamic colors with the standard mode if you know enough about colors and how to use them. I might have more things to say when I've used this mode for some time longer, but for now, I feel like it makes the blending process a bit easier to reach a dynamic color. Let's continue painting and see if this new mode improves how my color turns out. One of the things I struggle a lot about painting is that I don't know enough about colors to be able to mix them around without it going muddy. When I mix together two colors that are too far apart in the color wheel, it will usually turn a grayish muddy color, and I would need to manually put another color to somewhat cancel that muddiness. And not gonna lie, it could be hard to pick the right color, right? I'm sure it must take a ton of practice to know what colors to put, what colors can blend well with each other, and that's why color theory exists. But in the meantime, if my brush can automatically blend an orange color in the middle of my reds and yellows, I think that can help me save a lot of time, which is still very nice.
I don't know if I'm imagining it, but I do feel like my colors are less muddy with the perceptual color mixing. It might be because of my color choices this time around, and I might need to have more tries with it to be able to back it with confidence, but my first impression is that I quite like it actually. Oh, also another one of version 2's new functions that's so simple but I feel is going to help a lot of us is that you can now search layers by the name. If you tend to use a lot of layers, this could be helpful for you. I know you could go to a specific layer by holding Ctrl plus Shift button on your keyboard while clicking on the specific area you want to look for, but sometimes you use a lot of overlay layers, multiply layers, screen layers, etc. and that can easily become annoying to search for a specific layer just by that method. So let me tell you how you can search for layers by their name. I think the window is not shown by default, but you can access it by clicking on Window, Layer Search. It's going to pop up, and then you want to click on this dropdown and change it to All. I'll look for my skirt layer for example. What it does is, it's going to show all my layers that have the word skirt in it. And when I select the skirt layer, it's going to transport me to that layer. On normal days, I'm pretty messy and don't really name my layers. But now that there's this function, I think I'm going to try and do that regularly, so I don't get lost in my layers.
and we are done with today's demo. Now, what do I think about CSP version 2? There are actually quite some more features that I didn't get to include in this video, such as the improvement with the text tool, the align and distribute function, 3D camera, fisheye perspective ruler, as well as some more improvements on the webtoon side. But today, I focus on using the features that I, as someone who mainly does illustrations, can see myself using comfortably on a regular basis. Whether it's worth upgrading to or not would depend on what you mainly use CSP for and how useful you find the new features to your workflow. My personal verdict, again as someone who mainly does character illustration, is that I like how the new feature allows me to be more adventurous with my illust, along with the simple quality of life improvements like the liquefy multiple layers and the layer search. I think I would love to continue using it. If these features interest you and you would like to use them on your own Illust, there are currently three options. First, there's a subscription plan for CSP, which has both a monthly and annual options that will automatically grant you all the new updates as long as your license is still running. This option is available for PC, iPad, iPhone, and Android. Or, there's a similar alternative called the Update Pass that will grant you all the updates. But this option is an annual-only cycle and is only available to Windows or PC devices if you already have a perpetual version 1 license for PC. You may ask, what will happen to your CSP if your pass runs out? In that case, you can of course still use CSP, it will just revert back to your last perpetual license that you had before you got the update pass. Alternatively, you can also get the perpetual version of CSP version 2, meaning you buy the permanent license for CSP 2.0. This option is available for Windows and Mac OS. Also, keep in mind that since this is a license for version 2.0 only, you won't get updates for version 2.1 and above. Lastly, I would like to say thank you again to CSP for sponsoring this video and for letting me do a review of CSP version 2. It was really fun to experiment with the new features while sharing my thoughts with all of you. If you are interested to see more of my CSP tips and tricks, you can check out my previous videos where I share my drawing processes using CSP. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you find this review video helpful, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!